Hello and welcome to another episode of Pokemath. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today in episode number 39 we're going to be looking at a suggestion for a new tournament structure for the Players Cup 5. Please bear in mind this is indeed just a suggestion. So nothing is certain that this is going to be ever implemented. This is just my take on how we could improve the current tournament structure for the regional finals. But before we get into the actual tournament structure, let's take a look at some notes here. Because as I said, we're only looking at the regional finals. That is, not the global finals with double elimination bracket with 16 players. No, I actually think that is quite fine, even though overall I don't agree with double elimination being the best format. But at least for the global finals with quote quote only 16 players then it's just fine i'm also not going to touch the qualification that is the one we use for all tournament keys on pgo of course because i already think there's been sufficient improvements there and it is quite okay right now at least compared to where we started no so what we are going to look at is well yeah as slowpoke says first we're going to look at the current format and then we can see what the suggestions are here or what my suggestion is so what we have in the current format is that the whole world can pretty much participate in the qualification format where you can qualify for top 256 for each of the four regions which of course accepts Oceania which is 128. You all get allocated 50 tournament keys if you otherwise fulfill the criteria for participation. I believe it's something to do with you have to be active on your PGO account for instance. A lot of people they missed out on those keys because they haven't logged in for a while. Such a shame but it seems reasonable I guess. Then we move on to the regional finals where the objective is to find four winners that will qualify for the global finals. This is placed with double elimination brackets and or Swiss as we currently seen in the Players Cup 4. And of course, like I said, we have double elimination format in the global finals. This over here is the current format and that's what we're going to be using as a benchmark. And I'm going to be looking at the regional finals here. Because as I said, this has been used for double elimination throughout Players Cup 1, 2, 3, and now with Swiss in number 4. But you know what? Let's take a closer look at the regional final, finals format. So as I said, in Players Cup 1, you played double elimination starting 256 players, and you played over 3 days. So the first day, you would play down to around 64 players remaining. And on the second day, you would play down to 16, and the final day, you would find, well, your final 4. Just one break bracket, two losses, and you're out. Just like Dumb Elimination, well, is supposed to do. Made a video about that, you can always go check it out if you want to. In the Players' Cup 2, they then changed the Dumb Elimination to only be over two days. So they first slimmed all the way down to, say, 64. And then, well, just like before, and then they just continued everything on the second day. So, correct me if I'm wrong. This is just a lot of memory, of course. And obviously, this is also where the qualification changed, because in the Players' Cup 1, you just had to use tournament tickets, which was very frustrating. And in Players' Cup 2, that was where they introduced these tournament keys that made at least the first part of qualification much better. I think. Prove me wrong. And in Players' Cup 3, we still had double elimination over two days and some minor tweaks. So not the biggest difference between two and three. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. And then we move on to Players' Cup 4, where we saw another big change. We went away from only using double elimination, instead to use first nine rounds of Swiss to cut down to top 16. And on the second day, which is, well, second day, a few weeks after the first day, you would then play double elimination bracket down to the final four that would qualify for indeed the regional finals, sorry, the global finals. Now, this message up here for everybody who participated in the regional finals, this double game loss, that is a problem. I really think that has been a huge issue and which of course you can just fix by, well, just implement all the rules. Got so the thing is here, they implement just to be faster. However, as we saw, there was a huge delay still because any format where you're allowed an opponent to be, for lack of better words, less than an optimal person or just not a very nice person, that's where we're gonna have some issues. Because since only completed games counts, then you could often have a situation that it was 1-0 and it was clear who was gonna win game two, so it would become 2-0, say, but yet it was solved double game loss because, well, for whatever reason or not, yeah. And also, you can also flip it around and say, well, you can't expect your opponent just to scoop. That's also not the point. So, overall, I think this was a terrible regulation, but again, that's just my opinion. Well, as I already said, there has some problems, this whole system here right now. So it's prone to delays when you have one big pot of 256 players. 
there's always going to be some controversy somewhere and somebody uh, some judge calls needed and everything gets delayed and you would think ah, there will be less of a problem than with ERL events or IRL events no actually we saw a huge amount of delay at you know, the same level or even worse so it takes a lot of time the double game loss is a problem and of course you could think about that but why don't they just implement the normal timer you would use in the qualification period you know on the ladder tournaments not the ladder but the small eight of man pickup tournaments what i mean by that is when you play the regional final you have the standard 25 minute timer because that's the timer you can enable in a versus battle whereas when you play these small eight man pickup there's a 12 minute timer you could just use the 12 minute timer that is much more likely that at least you can finish all three games or at least have a 2-0 scenario within the 50 minutes best of three that you were allocated now you already see there's a lot of problems here about these delays in here so the suggestion that i have here wouldn't solve all these here it would at least make it less prone to delays but let's go to the suggested structure so let's try it out because remember this only really works because we're in an online world right at least for these players cups here so this is why it's suggestion for players cup 5 and not just for any tournament event out there it could be implemented that's not the problem it just is logistically a lot easier online than offline so what i suggest is as follows you still have 256 players qualifying through these 50 tournament keys these players would then be sorted seeded actually according to their leaderboard ranking so number one in the first group number two in the second group and until eight groups in this way you get eight groups of 32 players now this idea stems from the thing about flights that we have in the regulations but it's very very rarely used i think only myself i play an event with more than one flight that was the u.s nationals at some point where there was two flights because we were around 15 1600 players then they decide to fly it but nothing stops us from flying this even further to four or eight flights for instance what does it do when we go to this number of flights well you play five rounds of swiss only instead of nine and indeed yes slogo why do you actually only play five slides well i snipped this out here from the rules stating when you're between 21 and 32 players in a given flight you play five rounds of swiss and normally you cut a top eight which also why i say here that the top eight from each of these groups eight groups would advance to phase two as you will see i will have more than just two days i'll go back to the three days i'm here assuming that that is actually not a problem why because we had it before so what it does here in the second phase you would then be left with two groups of 32 players because you have eight times eight will be 64 players you will split them into two groups of 32 yes you could put them in one group of 64 but then you have to play six rounds of swiss and my idea was here with five rounds you would then do exactly the same as before you'll play five rounds of swiss just like the rules dictate and then top eight from each flight these two groups here would advance to phase three which then again would just be the double elimination format as we've seen before and you could just seed the players according to their final standing when you merge these two groups which we've seen before so that means that the overall number one would face number 16 the overall number two would face the overall number 15 and so forth on the way to eight versus nine and that's how you could uh, construct these phases now the thing is here why is this a good idea even because this just seems to make it more advanced but actually i would argue it actually turns it simpler now so i have some pros written here and they have to be explained because read, uh, read them out like this it just seems wrong so let me take them one by one what do i mean by faster first of all well by faster i mean in the sense that you look at here you're actually going to play 10 rounds instead of nine rounds over two days instead of one day but it makes it faster per day in the sense that you only have to play five rounds in a given day and after the first phase you're only left with 25 percent of the players that started out and again through phase two you cut another 75 percent of the remaining 75. indeed you go from 256 to 64 to 16 so only a quarter remains after each cut now that also means it becomes faster on each of these days because you wouldn't have to sit nine plus hours to play the nine rounds of swiss I don't know how time constrained you are in your private life and whatever but at least for my own i sometimes find it very hard to sit there for a whole day nine plus hours especially with delays so doing it this way here you can indeed just chop it up over multiple days like this here i find that to be beneficial especially now when we can do it online now correct winner 
This seems wrong, but I simply did not have a better way to express it. So what do I mean by that? That's been a discussion in the community also way back every time we discuss tournament structure. One of them is that the more rounds we play, so the more opponents you get to face, the winner that emerges from that is a more correct winner because, well, you're less matchup dependent, you're overall maybe a better player scene because you played against more players, not just your lucky matchups. This year is only a slight change from before because, like I said, this goes from 9 to 10 rounds of Swiss before your double elimination bracket would last 16. See, that is what I would say the more correct winner, but it's, it's a lesser argument, but it's still an argument. Finally, I think it becomes a lot simpler, because here it comes. Now, when you split up into eight groups of 32, you're actually running eight separate small events. We all know from organizing, I don't know if you try to organize, but if you organize a small event, it simply becomes faster. And since they run independently from each other, it's just eight different groups, right? If there's delay in one group, it doesn't have to affect the seven others, they can just keep playing, which means not everybody have to wait. Sure, somebody will have to wait, but it will be a lot less players and a lot less annoying than if you have to wait because one or two players are disagreeing in a very large 256 players pot. Therefore, splitting up like this here would make it less prone to delay in this case. Also, the argument for faster in that sense would also go in here, but definitely simpler. And that's something we've seen. And now when you also split up in eight groups, you can literally just have small eight, uh, so eight small channels on a Discord server, which you already use. And, well, using Battlefly or, well, you should just change the Limitless, to be honest. So big shout out to Limitless. That system is just really good. But even RK9 Labs also can use this also with ties and everything. I've tried it myself now with RK9 Labs for the Professor Cup. So it's a very, very nice system. So there's plenty of options out there to do this. And this is just one suggestion for why this could become better. And I know just to illustrate a little better now, this is actually what I'm proposing. So thanks to Miracle. Now you can see eight groups, merge down to the two, down to the double elimination bracket, just to get some coloration on this. Now, remember, this is just a suggestion, and actually, uh, I have no idea whether this will even be picked up or not, and maybe you will just all hate on it, but this is just my idea to make it a lot simpler, and I even think it's fun to play around with these kind of, I wouldn't say alternative tournament formats or tournament structures, but we have the option, we're playing online. And I really think the argument of splitting up is to eight small pots, making it faster and easier in that sense, really should carry some weight. But really, I want to hear your opinion about this. So what do you think? Like, um, let me know in the comments below. And uh, I wish you all a great day. And until next time.